Hey guys, my name is Adam Connett. I'm here with Motorsport Masters today. This is my 2024 race bike. It's the Sherco 250 SE Factory. I'm here to talk to you about my first impressions on the bike as well as some of the changes that I made for this race season. So being that I ride some technical and hard enduro style terrain, protection is the, uh, the, the most important thing to me on this bike. We added a uh, pro carbon, uh, carbon front rotor and caliper guard. We also did some bulletproof radiator guards as well as an SX slide plate, uh, six mil plastic plate as well as linkage guard underneath the bike. We also added some bulletproof protection items in the back to protect the rotor and caliper against rocks in that hard enduro terrain. Some of the changes I made to the controls on this bike, I added the 90 mil rise bar from Phoenix as well as their grip donut and grips. I have flow levers, which are super important. These things bend up and down in the event of a crash. Uh, important that I don't break levers during a race. I also took and I moved the bars forward to allow for a little bit more room in the cockpit of this kind of smaller bike. Big thing I was really excited about adding to the bike is the Smart Carb SC2. Um, this is going to be a game changer. Uh, I've only got a couple of rides and one race on it right now, so I'm looking forward to figuring out what it does to some of the ride characteristics of the bike. But the big things I'm excited on are the tool-free adjustability, so you can just turn a knob to change your ratio depending on uh, what you're trying to accomplish during that ride. Not having to adjust it or jet it differently for elevation changes. We went and did a ride in Mesquite, or a race in Mesquite, uh, a couple weeks ago, and I did not have to make any adjustments going from a thousand feet in Mesquite back here to 5,500 feet near Denver. The other thing I'm excited about is to not have to make adjustments when I'm riding here near Denver and then going up to Summit County or up in the mountains and riding at nine or 10,000 feet. It's also supposed to give you a huge improvement in fuel economy, 30% improvement in fuel economy, which for long hard enduro races or cross country style races, which I do, that's going to be a game changer too. Not having to stop and pit and fuel up during the race is going to be awesome. The other upgrade I made to this bike is in the exhaust. I added an FMF Turbine Core 2.1 silencer. This silencer has a spark arrestor built in, which is required for trail riding in Colorado. It has a spark arrestor, but it doesn't choke that bike up. Um, we also added an S3 expansion chamber. I've got a few different expansion chambers I'm going to try out over the course of the season and swap out because I end up beating those up pretty bad uh, riding techie terrain. The other modification I'm making to this bike is in the wheels and tires. I'm going to run two different wheel sets this year. One wheel set's going to be designed and built more for cross country and track style riding. And then I'm going to have a wheel set that I can switch out for hard enduro riding. Right now I have my track wheel set on. It's got a tube in the front and a Lucioli tube in the back. I like that because I can take and modulate the air pressure, but I've got a burly rear tire in the back that I do not have to worry about flatting. For the hard enduro setup, I'm running moose balls in the back, as well as a Lucioli or moose balls up front. I really want there to be no chance that I can do anything to, uh, to flat during a hard enduro race. And I think that the moose balls accompanied with a gummy, really soft tire is gonna be great for a lot of the hard enduro terrain that I ride. So some of my first impressions getting on this bike, the first thing that I noticed is the way that the geometry of the bike felt. It, it feels quite a bit smaller than other bikes that I had been on. And I think it's that dimension in between the foot pegs and where the handlebars sit. This bike feels like it's more compact, which for a guy like me, I'm not huge. I'm 5'10", about 180 pounds. It felt like a really small and nimble bike for me to move around. I think that's gonna be really advantageous, uh, riding hard enduro and technical terrain, being able to move that bike around underneath you and feel like you're not trying to lug this huge thing around in the rocks. Another thing that I really like about this bike initially is the throttle response. At higher RPM ranges, this thing screams but it also lugs really well. So in that chunky, tight terrain, it wants to go slow, has a ton of torque uh, just waiting for you, and it, it ends up lugging in the techie stuff better than some of the 300s that I've ridden. So prior to the Sherco, I was on a 2019 KTM 250 XC. Um, that bike and the Sherco are pretty similar in that they're both 250cc carbureted trail bikes. They both have linkage suspension, similar transmissions. They're kind of designed to do the same thing. Uh, one of the things that I noticed uh, when I first got on the Sherco that I like over the KTM is the suspension as well as what this bike's kitted out with from the factory. This bike came with a fan, uh, came with some protection items, some things that you would want to add to a bike right off the bat anyway. The other huge upgrade I think is in the KYB suspension. 
the sprung suspension feels more consistent and I think is a huge upgrade from that KTM. So I ended up putting about 120 hours on that KTM the last year that I had it. Right now I've got 20 hours on this Sherco and I can tell you I already feel more comfortable on this bike than I did on that KTM. That might be due to the geometry, my lap times are better, I feel more confident in chunky and technical terrain on the Sherco than I did that KTM. Um, like I said, I only have 20 hours on it so far. So a couple things that I noticed that I still have yet to get used to and might not be super stoked on right off the bat. The first thing is how the bike felt between my feet. Coming off of a KTM 250XC, I feel like this bike is a little bit wider in between my feet. I still have some adjustments to make on the foot pegs, so that might remedy it. Uh, but the way that the bike felt in between the feet was a little different. The other side of the coin with having a smaller cockpit is that at higher speeds and terrain where you really want a big stable bike, this maybe wasn't the best right off the bat. I did make some adjustments in pulling the foot pegs back and moving the bars forward. And in that Mesquite race where we had some long, wide open sandy areas, it did feel nice and stable. Um, but those are a couple of things right off the bat that I think are gonna take some getting used to. Thanks for watching. Those are some of my first impressions on this bike. I'm really excited to put a ton of hours on the Sherco 250 SE. We've got a bunch of races lined up and I'll be sure to let you guys know what I think this coming race season.